definitely was back there. I had to get picture. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, <the music. laughs> oh, Lordy, I might have peed myself just a tiny bit. All right, you guys. I am super excited. I know somebody out there has some unnatural love for the person that's about to come out on this stage, but it can't be as deep, intense, or unnatural as mine. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Zack Snyder! first Comic-Con, you're a pro, so welcome back to Hall H. Um, and this is a very special movie. Uh, I want to know a little bit quickly about how stoked you are. You've always been a comic book enthusiast. You've lived in this world for a while now. How insane is this particular film <clears throat> for you? Well, it's cool because, I mean, for me, you know, it's really a dream come true type of project because I've always been into the sort of big icon superheroes, um, and Batman and Superman, I mean, I don't know after that what you need. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, they're, they're pretty, pretty epic. So, yeah. yeah it's, it, and by the way, and getting a chance to make this particular movie with, with this particular cast, it, 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 I, I don't know, for me, how it gets any, any better than that. I, yeah. I really, honestly, it's, it's been a, a pleasure and, a, and an honor working with this, this group. Um, it's, it's, I've seen some footage from the film, it's extraordinary. I, I don't, I don't know quite how, how to articulate what an epic, uh, what an epic collision, uh, and story this is going to be. I think, um, the thing to do right now is to bring the rest of the cast down. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Holly Hunter! For you guys, it's um, it's uh, not not the whole movie, of course. But, uh, wow. I think you get a little bit of a taste of what it's about. So um, yeah, let's just show it. Please. Experts. Not everybody has read every DC book, free people in the back. Never slept. <laughs> How canonical is this conflict? How rooted in canon is the Batman v Superman conflict? Or is this something that was created for this film? Because personally, I never heard of it till now. Well, it, 
I mean, listen, you know, the if, if you want to talk about the story itself or about the, the, the sort of particulars of this movie, that was a thing that we, it's definitely based on just ideas that we had, you know, in a room talking about like what would be cool to see. Now, the idea of Batman fighting Superman is not, is not a, it's a, it's a thing that happens all the time in comic books. It's, um, but, you know, for me, images like, there's a bunch of images, and there's been a lot of talk about my sort of um, love of a particular comic book, which is, um, you know, The Dark Knight Returns, which is, you know, Woo! a comic book that I love, and, and I, I definitely homage a lot in the movie as a way of saying to Frank Miller, like, you're a genius, and I, I think that book is genius. But the story itself is not that story. Mm -hmm. um, the story itself is a story that we came up with just, um, you know, on our own. Um, Chris Terrio, uh, who is the amazing writer of the, the screenplay, um, you know, is a genius. He, he worked with Ben on Argo and did an amazing job, and that movie is great. And, uh, and he, and he, you know, he's, he's, you know, he and I just, you know, we just talked about like what, how do you make this make sense? Like, what is the why of Batman fighting Superman? And, and there's a lot of, we had a lot of great, we we had done stuff in Man of Steel that actually allowed us to create a conflict that really makes sense for what this movie's about, and and also sort of launch you toward what could be bigger conflicts with maybe more, more other superheroes. Who, who knows? I mean, I don't. I mean, I do know. You totally know. <laughs> You're a comic tease. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Glad you worked through that with me. Yeah, it's nice. Sorry. Um, this is also the first time we're seeing Batman and Superman together on the big screen. We've seen it in the books before, obviously, many times. Uh, and it's also the first time we both have, we have both Gotham and Metropolis together. So, again, how did you merge those universes, and kind of what roles did you follow, and what roles did you break? Yeah, well, I mean, I think the rule that we, the big rule that we broke is we put Gotham and Metropolis right next to each other. I don't know if it appeared that way ever, maybe somewhere, probably. It's been, you know, if you dig deep enough, you can find uh, a justification for just about everything. Um, but it made sense to us and worked for our story that they were kind of sister cities, um, you know, across a big bay. And so um, you had kind of, it's like Oakland and San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> San Francisco. San Francisco would win, I think. Okay. Metropolis. I'm from Metropolis. Okay, good. Yeah. That feels good. Um, we look. People know this world, and they think they know this world intimately. But there have been so many iterations and so many reboots, obviously, in the DC universe. I want to talk a little bit about the, the panel here because this is a pretty iconic group of characters that people know that have been played before. Um, if we could just go down uh, the line and talk a little bit about um, what Creative Challenge that presents when you're playing a character that's been played before multiple times by multiple actors. What do, again, what do you stay true to from the canon and what do you invent? And was that challenging for you? Did everybody just find a new way into the character and simple? I don't know. Should we start with, uh, yeah, why don't we start with Paul? Anyone who would like to start? This is a democracy. Um, okay. Well, um, Michael Caine is a uh, pretty amazing. As of, um, so I had big shoes to sit in, but um, he's a little different, my Alfred. So I think there are surprises in the store, but uh, I, I carried along myself on the explosions around me and on the world around me, I followed the boss and uh, tried to make him happy and tried to make him uh, safe and tried to make him grow up a little. Uh, hi everyone, you're so cute. Yeah, I'm so excited, so I'm just buying some time. Um, well, for me, with Wonder Woman, uh, I feel like I have been given such a huge opportunity to show the strong, beautiful side of women. Finally. Yeah. And Wonder Woman has all the strength of a superhero, but at the same time, at the same time, she's very sophisticated, loving, and has a lot of emotional intelligence. So for me, I feel 
very, very privileged to be the one who's going to bring her back to life, and I just can't wait to celebrate this year. I was going to say the thing about the strong, independent women, but she's a good one. No, my character has been in, obviously, other movies. and uh, uh, You know, there's always kind of like a campy element to the character, but probably, in terms of your question, uh, I think there's probably a real kind of emotional groundedness to this version of it. And uh, I attribute that to uh, the writer, Chris Terrio, who's just such a phenomenal writer and uh, gives every character in this movie like real emotional core, even though the situations are so uh, heightened and theatrical. Uh, yeah, it's also, yeah, also had the most luxurious locks of any Luthor ever. Really very, <laughs> swing that around, that was beautiful. A very low bar, they were all bald. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to Comic Con, I just realized. You guys, are, you guys are awesome. We have a lot of energy. I like it. Um, Lois Lane. Uh, I wanted to be Lois Lane since I was five years old, so here we go. And uh, I watched, uh, I think it was Superman 2 on replay over and over and over. Um, but when the, when the opportunity Rose, of course I was nervous. I wanted to, you know, make you guys all happy with Lois. But at the same time, I, I, I was just willing and open to sort of bring a very modern take on her and, and, um, and, and just sort of embrace again this really strong woman. And, and it's, it's this wonderful thing that women have where we have this emotional intelligence and, and, and the vulnerability along with strength that I thought was really um, beautiful that Zach lets me bring to Lois. Um, for me, well, obviously, especially, Chris Reeve did such a fantastic job. Like, uh, it was uh, dangerous for me to go anywhere near that, so I, I, I left that to its own thing, and then just with Zach on Man of Steel, built the character as much as I could, uh, drawing from the canon. And um, I've just tried to follow that nature of the character that we we ran with in Man of Steel. If I, uh, if I thought too hard about the actors who played this part before, I, I, I couldn't have taken the job. I mean, Tim Burton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, the great Christian Bale. And I, I talked to Zach about it. I was like, are you sure? You know, and he said, I have this vision. I have this idea for the guy, and you're perfect for it. And I said, well, what do you mean? He's like, End of his robe, he's older, he's like a burnout. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's true. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> the, 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 the truth was that he took me through the process of creating this character that I quite almost didn't see, and at the end of it, I was like even sort of astonished to look at it and go, That's exactly what you pitched me, and I wasn't even sure I was I was doing it. I, I had this really weird experience where, before we started the movie, I was getting my kid a Halloween costume, and my son is really into Batman, and um, wisely, and uh, he, he, we went to a, a store, a, a costume store in Los Angeles, and it was pretty empty, and uh, I was in the aisle, and I had this, boy, and I turn around, and it's, it's Christian Bale, who's the sweetest guy in the world. Oh my god! And there he and I are standing in the Batman comic. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I said, look, man, you know, you're the best. Like, what do you think? You got any tips? And make sure you can piss in that suit. <laughs> Did you? Actually, I think, Henry, we put a zipper on this, your suit retroactively, didn't we? This time. Yeah, this time. <laughs> you don't think of these things. I was like, it'll be fine. I mean, how long is he gonna be in it? It's not gonna be that long. Yeah, like 15 hours. That's oh, and also, let me just say, let me just say, Holly uh, has an original part in the film, and I've been such a giant fan of Holly's forever. When we were writing the script, that I was like, okay, we need to find a part. I need, we need to write a part for Holly Hunter to play in this movie. I don't care what the f it is. But it turns out that it's a super important part, so that's, that's just 
that's good. But she's amazing. So. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a dick uh, because you know the, the the title begs a very specific question, right? Which part of the title? Uh, the Batman v Superman okay, part of good. the title. Very good. Uh, and you know you've heard this a million times since you started developing this film, and you'll hear it a million right. times after. Who who would win a fight between Batman and Superman? Now I'm not gonna ask that question because I think it's we good, know because I made a whole movie about. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, because. Again, essential to this conflict is an immortal, you know, an immortal man, uh, you know, a, a god, as you articulated in the film, versus a human being, which begs a lot of other questions about kind of, you know, us embracing our own humanity and what that means. However, this Batman seems to be Mecha Batman. <laughs> <laughs> he is a little bit I of an augmented I think thing, Batman. I think the thing to look at in the, the we call it the mech suit, whatever, but it really, in truth, it's not. It's a self-preservation concept, not to you know give anything away, but it's not really enhancing his strength more than protecting him, buying him time, if you will. From everything that Something. Superman is gonna yeah. blow out of his eyeballs and mouth and nose. Like a pinata, <laughs> you know, so. It's, it's, I'm actually have to see, because it's slightly complicated. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna add, we're gonna add. Like I said, it's a whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> the whole entire movie. Answer no. that question. Literally, that's the only question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take an audience question. Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, okay. So, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Strike close. <laughs> so, anyway, clearly in the movie, you deal with a lot of philosophical issues in the film. And what I was wondering is if any of what you work through maybe perhaps changed the way that you will look at, at life now. You just stayed adorable through the entire question. <laughs> <laughs> Pure adorability. Who is that? You was that for Batman and Superman? Everyone that could, up here. That could, that could, that could be for whoever has an answer for it. Wow. <laughs> 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 Is there anybody who wants to tell me that? It's like those guys down at that end. Yeah, it seems like Batman and Superman. I, just... I, I don't know, it's kind of tough for me to say I, I play a god, so I'm going to step away from this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there are some really interesting, that Zach and Chris put together, some really interesting ideas of, um, you know, Metropolis being a big successful city and Gotham City being... Um, a place where a lot more downtrodden people live and there's a ferry they take across the people who work in Metropolis take from Gotham City and the whole idea of you know wealth and power and the way power engenders fear and there were a lot of really ideas that were a little bit too smart for me to understand but that the movie was trafficking in and that I thought made it feel uh, real to me and, and smart and uh, so I was even more proud to be part of it. This is from someone who made a movie that I had to I had to go to Wikipedia every five minutes to understand Argo. But sure, yeah, Superman versus Batman, too smart for Ben Affleck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll um, be more Wikipedia. Yeah. One more. Oh, Superman's back out of the gym again. Hello. Was it leg day or arm day? All right, let's go. No, no. Look at this guy's. Look at this guy's tattoos. Yeah. He's got tattoos on his calves. Oh, okay. very nice. Superman. Oh. Oh. How do I know that? I've seen him before. <laughs> you know what, Zach? So have we. <laughs> Go for it, buddy. When you guys were filming the movie, at what point in time did you say, oh my god, we're coming up with something great, awesome. We're going to blow all your guys' minds away. Without spoilers, but if you do. Or spoilers. Please. <laughs> While shooting the movie, I feel like... Yes. I mean, you know, like, the truth is, I mean, when you're shooting a movie, there are moments when you shoot the movie that feel like, wow, this is cool. I mean, just, for instance, when, actually, when we were doing, a, we did a little photo shoot, um, you know, while everyone's getting their costumes together, and it's like Wonder Woman and Superman and Batman all sort of standing there and getting their pictures taken, you're like, oh my lord, that's crazy. Okay. But I think that, you know, for me, it was... It actually happens long before that, you know, when we're just kind of figuring out what we're going to do and I'm drawing and we're just kind of getting ideas of, you know, different kind of images that we're going to create. And I just normally 
this is gonna sound weird, but I'm by myself when that's happening. Um, and I don't do anything weird. Sure. <laughs> but it is, there is that moment like when you do like, if you do a doodle and you're like, oh my Lord, I know that. That's, I wanna see that. I wanna, I wanna, let's, where are the cameras? We need to get, where is everybody? Come on, let's go shoot this. So I think that, that that's really for me the moment. I don't know like for these guys if they had different experiences, of course they probably would, but you know, because by the time also I'm filming, I've seen the costume a thousand times and you know, it's, it's like a love scene, you know, always, everyone talks about, oh, when you do a love scene, is it sexy? And I, I, I don't know, because I've never done a love scene in a movie, I've only witnessed it. Um, that would be weird. Um, but they, they always say, the actors are always like, yeah, no, it's like, this is dumb, so. I don't know if they have that same feeling when they're in their superhero I, I had a feeling where, you know, I, um, first of all, I want to say Christian Bale's also buying his son a suit. He doesn't just hang out. <laughs> <laughs> So much of what's there, and I always thought you can only tweak a certain amount past that because you've almost kind of made the movie. But I remember a day about two weeks in it where I read the scene and I thought about how to play it, and I came in and watched it, and I thought, okay, yeah, we should probably like shoot it this way or that way. And Zach set the shot up so that it was one shot, and he put it on a crane, and it came around, and it covered everybody's dialogue, and it kind of encompassed the scope of what we wanted to do. And I was just like, fuck, I would never do that. That's so good. <laughs> Sorry, it says people were under 18. Um, but anyway, that's, I remember thinking that we were in good hands. We just haven't heard anything from Holly, and I just want to hear something out of your beautiful mouth. With your beautiful voice. That's it. Thank you. All right, well, uh, we, have one, we have one last... Uh, Kind of uh, thing you want to do before we go. Oh, sure, yeah, guys. I guess we should take one more look at the uh, piece because I know it's. Only <laughs> like three minutes and eleven seconds, I think, or something like that. How do I know how long it is? Take another look. Oh, okay. <laughs> Today, as a team, wrap it up in a warm little ball, stick it deep inside. This has been amazing. Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice opens March 25th, 2016. Please give it up for Holly Hunter, Jeremy Irons, Bobby Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it once again for WB Pictures' presentation.